Uh, so, well, first of all, let me say thank you very much for having me. It's definitely an honor to be here. I know you guys are the smart students, so you guys are inviting me, telling me that you don't think I'm that dumb. Um, is that right? Okay. Um, so anyway, very glad to see some familiar faces, people who have taken my course in the past. I guess I haven't managed to piss you off too much this or that. I'm definitely very nice to see some new faces. I guess some of you may be taking my class in the future. Who knows? Maybe. I am guessing this is a male-only club, and uh, we were just uh, there to enjoy it. So that they don't get sued at that track. <laughs> you don't think so? All right. Well, you do have female students in the club, right? Very <laughs> OK, so you guys are more like engineering students. When a female joins an engineering uh, that there is a celebration. <laughs> we the same. Um, anyway, so uh, once again, thank you very much for having me. Um, when Sasha and Ray came to me and asked me uh, to talk to you guys a little bit about the crisis, the recent financial crisis, and um, what academic finance, academic profession contributed to it, or how it contributed to it, I figured that I'd probably talk to you about the crisis, but the second title of this whole thing. Hi, Jason. Uh, the second title of this whole thing is going to be Our Finance Professors Overpaid. In other way, um, in other words, I'm, we're going to try to figure out what this crisis was about, how it unfolded, whether financial economists and economists in general predicted it, and why they couldn't stop it, and then we're going to try to figure out for ourselves whether they or we are overpaid. Okay? Now, to give some substance to this whole overpaid word, how much do you think we get paid per year? Just so that, no, so that everybody is on the same page. Let's say you're a young finance prof at a university in the Northern area. How much are, do you expect to make? Yes? You have to check on your computer. I can publish. Uh, anyone who works for any university has to be published if you make a hundred thousand. Oh, you can research that too, eh? Uh, okay, so yeah, the starting salary for a uh, finance professor is around 120 uh, these days per year, of course. And the better the school, the higher you get, the, the more you get paid, right? So if you're starting out at Harvard, then your salary is probably north of 200,000 a year right away. And then the more you work and the more the profession values you, the higher your salary gets. I personally know a couple of people who get half a million a year just in salaries from their universities. And then, of course, there are book fees and um, consultations that they do for various businesses. So the profession pays pretty well. So then the question that arises is, do we actually perform for the money? Uh, and a lot, oftentimes, you would hear on TV or in the, some newspapers that the, journal, the journalists who find out how much finance profs get immediately start asking the question as to, well, if they're that well paid and that smart, apparently, how come they didn't prevent this recent crisis? Or how come they didn't even forecast it? So we're going to try to figure out if we actually predicted it and what happened to this. So briefly, what I'm going to talk about. First of all, we're going to talk about the financial crisis itself, uh, the causes, the consequences, just a little bit about everything. Then we're going to talk about how we allowed this to happen, being that there are thousands of economists and thousands of financial economists working on problems like this every day, and still this stuff happens. Then we're going to talk about uh, where we go from here, and then finally we're going to say we're going to, I'm going to say a couple words about how this involves or how this concerns you, right? Because you are, some of you are about to graduate, some of you are graduating soon, and uh, your careers are probably something that's very important, something that's on your mind every day, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So, let's start with the crisis. Here's a question for you guys. Have we been here before? Has this ever happened before, the financial crisis of this magnitude? What do you think? Uh, 1928, the Great Depression started with a big crisis, so yes, definitely that was a big one, the Great Depression. Yes. Anything, and this is what you often hear in the news, that this crisis is as bad, or maybe could have been even worse, than the Great Depression, right? Anything more recent than that, though? 
was the Great Depression our, our most recent benchmark, or is this something closer uh, to today? Yes. The the dot-com bubble, exactly. If you look at this little picture here, and can anybody see that high? I didn't know we were going to have that high of a screen here. So, um, see those two humps at the end of the figure? The figure, by the way, is the S&P 500, the index of 500 largest U.S.-based or U.S.-listed companies, right? So, those two humps and the uh, crashes that followed them represent the, light, the, the last two bubbles and the last two cr crashes, right? The last one, the one that I circled over there, is the one we just lived through, right? But the previous one, like you rightly said, happened in the early 2000s, and that followed the big internet bubble, right? So if you look at the magnitude of how our indices behave, now it looks like we've been there before, and quite recently so. Right? Now, let's um, look at this one. This one is a much longer term. The previous picture took us back to 1950. This one takes us back 100 years. And it, what this one does is it looks at daily returns. And those significant fluctuations in daily returns probably represent something either very good or something very bad that was happening on those particular days. Right? So what we just lived through is right here. And you can probably compare it with the history and see that eh, it was pretty bad. But there were definitely worse times. For example, this guy here. Who, who can tell us what that is? That is, if you can't see that, that's, not, uh, that's in 1987. What happened in 1987 that we had that one day of really, really bad returns? Far back. Okay, so the, the, yes. Black Friday? Yes, there was a Black Tuesday, I believe, but maybe you're right, actually. I keep forgetting which day of the week that was. But yes, in 1987, we had a really, really bad couple of days, and that's what happened during those days. So markets fell much further in one day than they did during the recent crisis. In one day off the recent crisis. And then, of course, there's this here which is, you already told me before, the Great Depression and the crisis that preceded the Great Depression, right? So if you look at history, we've been there before. Now, most of us don't remember. And that's why when the journalists say, woo, this is the worst thing that happened, well, that's true probably in the life of that particular journalist. Journalists are usually young. The recent crisis is probably the worst thing that happened. But if you look at 100 years back, We've seen this before. We've lived through these before. Now, um, let's look at this. This is uh, the last 60 years of GDP in the U.S. and Canada. The U.S. is in blue and Canada is in red. So, and this is not GDP. This is GDP growth, right? So, what? Um, we, what let, I don't know how to answer that question, but um, crises often, not always, but often, financial crises lead to recessions, right? So this picture shows us how we were doing in terms of recessions for the past 60 years. So what is a recession, technically? How do we guess? Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, two quarters of negative growth. Three. So, uh, right. So we have to have three quarters of negative GDP growth or GDP decline to qualify as a recession. Right? Now, this is not quarterly, this is yearly, because the quarterly pictures would be too noisy, and I decided to sort of aggregate this into yearly uh, numbers, but you can see that the recession that we are in now, uh, it's, you know, it's pretty serious, pretty bad, but look at, look at the history. Canada is in red, right? We had one that was worse in the early 90s, we had another one that was definitely worse in the early 80s, then we had some stuff happen in the early 50s, so this is not some, this is not new. We've seen this before. Well, our parents and our grandparents definitely have seen this before. The, for the US, this probably is one of the worst that they have seen in a while. But once again, if you go as far back as the Great Depression, this particular picture doesn't have the Great Depression, then we've been here before. Now, one really, really bad thing that comes with recessions is what? Something that touches probably every one of us, and 